Hey guys, welcome to my DVD collection video. I'm going to talk about my favorite gory, gross out films. I've got a lot of requests from people to do a video on my favorite gore films and films that I like that are real gory films. So I thought I would finally get to doing one. And I went through and picked out of all the movies I have the top gore films, like the absolute top. And a few of them I wouldn't recommend checking out. They're not really that good movies, but they have really good gore scenes in them. So I went through all of them and picked the top ones. The first one I picked is um, Lucio Fulci. I believe that's pronounced right, and that's his film, Zombie. And this has a lot of titles, and it gets people very confused. And the spelling is different a lot of times as well. This is the um, Blue Underground version of the film. Anchor Bay made one a couple years ago that's now out of print. I never got that one, but I have the tape of that one, I believe. There's this one, and then there's the... Um, the other company has one out, and it's called Zombie, and it's spelled Z-O-M-B-I, and then two. And that's the same movie, so don't get these confused. But this has, all throughout the movie, some great, really realistic gore effects. And I would definitely recommend checking this one out. But I'm sure a lot of people have seen that one. This one is not that well known of. It's a um, Shriek Show released this film. But the sequences of the operation, like when they're removing the face in this movie in a couple scenes, are really gory and extremely realistic. And it's faceless. It's a... I think it's it's supposed to take place in France. I don't... I, don't, I believe it's dubbed over in English. I'm not sure. It's, sometimes it's hard to tell with these movies. Because, like, the dubbing... A lot of movies from, like, usually Italy... All the movies are recorded without sound, so they're, you know, dubbed over later. So it's really hard to tell, like, what the language they were actually speaking when they did it. Usually they would speak in their native language. Like, they have, like, people speaking Italian, some people speaking English. So that's why so many Italian films seem, like, dubbed over. And that's because they don't record the dialogue. Faces, though, I really liked it. It's a real... It's later, though. It's not an, um... It's a 87 film. It's a later, not an early... I mean, not a 70s film. A lot of, and it's later for real gory films because most of the extreme gory films that I picked are older. This one is a newer one, and this is a, you know, homage to Grindhouse films, and it's Planet Terror, which is Robert Rodriguez. This film, I think this is my favorite out of the two. Well, it was originally one film, Grindhouse, but that whole idea didn't work out for some reason, which was too bad because I really liked that idea. You know, the trailers in the beginning, then the one movie, then the trailers, then the other one. And I, I believe they intended to make more, and it just didn't work out, and people didn't understand what the system was. I'm, I'm sure people who know horror and know 70s films understand what that means, If but if you don't, you would not get it. But the gore sequence in this, in this movie are great and really well done. And I, I like it. I really, really like that one the best of both of them. This one isn't a real, isn't an extremely gory film, but it's a really gross, disgusting film. I've only ever watched it once and I nearly got sick. This is the whole plot of it. It's called The Warm Eaters. And I'm sure some people have seen this one. And I believe the one guy who plays The Warm Eaters, I was looking him up, and he hasn't done, like, shit in years. And then suddenly I looked him up, and he's in the movie that's considered one of the most shitty movies, Creepshow 3. So, and he was actually in that, apparently. I don't remember who he was, but this movie is absolutely disgusting. A lot of the sequences are close-ups and people actually eating live worms. It's awful. If you have a squeamish stomach, you'll get sicked by this movie because it's really disgusting. But Creepshow 3, he was in, apparently. And I don't know if he was the husband. I don't. I couldn't tell, but... A lot of people put down Creepshow 3. It's not a good movie. It's, it's a piece of shit. It's really a shitty movie. But it reminded me like of the Goosebumps series. Almost like a dirty Goosebumps who was getting away with something. If you've seen it and you're a fan of Goosebumps and all you're afraid of the dark, mainly Goosebumps. You you're get what I mean. This is another one that was really gross. And it's Rabid Grannies. It's a trauma film. I got this one years ago at Blowout Video. This was one of my favorite video stores. I know they overpriced. But I don't know, something about that and the logo, I love that store. They're all gone. I, when I used to go down to Florida, I used to always go down to blow out video. And there was one in New York City, I believe. And I don't, I think they're all out of business. But if any of you know, if there's still any of them, let me know. Because I'm curious about, like, what happened to them. But this is about these, like, grannies that get bitten. 
I'm trying to remember the plot of it. They get some kind of a curse or something, and they become these zombie grannies that are eating people. And at one point, she eats this one, like the head opens up and eats this person. It's really gross. The next one, let me find one, is um, now this one I've gotten a lot of crap about not saying in the zombie videos, and I forgot to say it. And I was like, after I watched the video back, I was like, shit. But there was no way to add it in because I already finished the video and had it the one to take the way I wanted it. But it's Peter Jackson's film Dead Alive. And this has um, another title in Europe and other countries that people mostly know it as, as Brain Dead. This movie I really like. And I, and I don't know about all of you, but I hope at some point Peter Jackson goes back to making another you know, extreme R-rated gore horror film and another, you know, drama like Heavenly Creatures. I like what, you know, Lord of the Rings is fine. King Kong was fine. There's nothing wrong with him. But these are where he, he has his best abilities, making good, gross, cool horror films. The Frighteners is another really good one. Not a gore film, but another one of my favorite movies he did with Michael J. Fox. Um... The sequence in this, that's the goriest. Well, all throughout there are gore scenes, but the scene, this is pretty much the goriest film ever. The scene with the lawnmower when the zombies are getting, like, killed by it. I mean, it's extreme. I just couldn't imagine, like, you know, the crew having to, you know, clean all that shit up. There should be a documentary. They should do a new DVD called Clean the Shit Up. Because, I mean, that stuff was everywhere. That house would have been ruined. And I'm sure it was a set, but that would have been ruined forever. Another one that he did, which was, was Bad Taste, and I don't remember this as well because I haven't watched this as much, but this has a lot of gore sequences. And I, it was funny, I was talking about Blood Video. I bought a tape of this years ago at Blood Video before the DVD, and I don't even think I knew who Peter Jackson or anything was because that was before Lord of the Rings and all that. But this is the limited edition DVD. I'm, I don't know if this is still in print anymore. I'm pretty sure it is. It, this version with the two discs might not be, but I'm not sure. The next one, this had a really gross sequence. It was like an orgy sequence with this slime. It was disgusting. And, ugh. And it was society. And I don't think anyone knows this. It was about, like, this Hollywood family. And they were these... I don't even like discussing it. I don't even remember it, much of it. I just know it was really gross. It's from Anchor Bay. And it's from 19, I believe, 89. The DVD came out 2002. I don't know if this is in print or not anymore. I haven't seen it much. And this is a new one. This is brand new. And I didn't care much for the film. But the more I think about it, the more I like it. Now, and I think about it, the acting wasn't very good. But the gore sequences, the practical effects, not the CGI. The CGI was not good. But the gore sequences in this movie were really good. And it's Robert Kurtzman's The Rage. Just Robert, if you're doing another movie, just stick with practical effects. Don't don't bother with the CGI. And if you can't do the um, gore on the scene, then don't do it. Because the CGI gore does not look very good. And it takes out of the movie. I don't think there's any need to use those blood splatters that are CGI. You can do that on set. They did that in Return of the Living Dead. I mean, Dawn of the Dead. All those movies without doing that. So there's no need to to do that. Some, it's like you should only use CGI if it's something you can't do in real life, like a, you know, build something or make this huge city or something, but not blood splattering. And this one is was a really gross movie and gross sequence in the movie. Not the whole movie. There was a few gross sequences, but the biggest gory sequence was the raft scene in Creepshow 2. I like this movie. It, um, it wasn't directed by George Romero, and I believe all he did was produce, he wrote this, and I don't know if he was on set for it or not, but I like this as much as the original. It wasn't, it wasn't as good, but I really like these movies. The first and second creep show. Third one, like I said, I talked about that earlier, it was alright. But this is a really good must-watch one. And the raft sequence is extremely gory. And this one I'm just telling, saying because um, it was gory. And it's inspired really gory sequels, but I don't care much for this. I don't really care for the sequels. I like the original. I like the first one. That was it. Part two was all right. Part three was like, mm, and I didn't care for part four. I kind of wish it would have just stayed as one movie. I think it was a good as a one movie. Danny Glover was good, 
and I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. It's saw. It's got this cool one, this disc that does that stuff. I always worried they were gonna break open and like spill all over everything, but they never have. I'm, but I'm shipping. I'm sure they could have. But this is it's it's this first saw is a good movie. The the other ones are just all right. I mean. They kind of, kind of became just disgusting for the point of being disgusting in the other ones. And this one is another, you know, one of the top, you couldn't say a list of top gore films without saying um, George Romero's Day of the Dead. This movie, I, I saw, I was reading some interview, the guy who plays Captain Rhodes in this was upset when they were talking about Dire of the Dead. They were talking about the other zombie films and they left out Day of the Dead. Some people say they don't like this one. And they've made they've made a um, remake of this that it's direct to DVD it was going to come out but have yet to see it. A lot of people are saying they've been watching it online, but I'm going to wait to watch the DVD because I want to see it on TV. I don't like watching movies for the first time like those crap quality ones on the internet. But this is great. I it's one of my favorites. I like it as much as Day, as Dawn of the Dead. I love like underground hiding in the hiding kind of movies and this is great and the sequence with Captain Rhodes being eaten it is so well done and there's no CGI and it, people who do CGI in horror movies should look at this and say it was done without it I don't need it you don't need to use all that CGI crap stick with practical take your time make a good well-made movie instead of using all that crap just because you can use it doesn't mean you have to and that's what I what I say. Sorry. And the next one is um, Suicide Club. And the real gory sequence in this one, there was a copy machine sequence, and the scene that's the main one is when all those kids jump in front of that train and kill themselves. Oh my God, that was that. I'm sure some people have seen that. I was a little disappointed seeing they were selling this at Hot Topic. Like like, every, like when I see something sell at Hot Topic, that kind of shits on it for me. It's like all those gothy, you know, emos. I don't mind goss, but emos, ugh. watching it, I don't know. I don't think they'd probably like it, though. The next one is Return of the Living Dead. I always show this version because I like this cover better than the new one. I own the new one as well, though. This is a better cover. It's the classic cover. This has really, like, not a ton of gore sequences, like extreme ones, but the ones that they used were great. Like the heads being bitten and um, the scene with trash. I love this movie. And I hope it never gets remade. I don't want to see a remake of this. It's like everything is being remade now. And I saw, you know, the remake of Last House on the Left. I can't believe they're doing that. That's re I, it's just absurd. And and the fact that Wes Craven allows it and and wants lets it go on and produces it. I don't know what he's what he's doing that for. I guess he's like, well, if he doesn't, they're gonna do it anyway. So I guess he'd rather be there for it. Um, the next one is George Romero's Dawn of the Dead. This one. It's not all like extreme gore. It has good blood splatter sequences. The extreme gore is like the arm being bitten off in the um, mall, and the scenes when all the zombies are attacking the, you know, Tom Savini's bike gang. That's the goriest parts in this film. I love this one as well. The remake was pretty gory as well. It has a few sequences. The unrated one, well, a lot, pretty, maybe even a little bit more. I, I thought the remake was okay. It was a remake that was a little different and changed it to a way that was interesting. But I've talked to a few people about it, and I didn't care for the mall that they used. It wasn't, I don't know, it wasn't what the kind of mall you would expect. It was like, it hardly even looked like a mall. I don't know. It wasn't, I don't know, I like two-level malls when you can peer down, look over the balcony and see. It, it's cooler like that. That's why the original was so much better. And this is an independent one. And the sequence with the vampires melting at when the sun is coming up is, I mean, it's really gory and it's amazing. It's really beautifully shot as well. And I don't know if that many people have seen this. I think it was shot in the 90s, like the early 90s or the late, late 80s. And it was um, Leaf Junkers Darkness, and this is the vampire version, the two-disc set. This is a must-see for anyone a fan of independent horror films. I love this movie. And here's the cover. As you can tell, it's a really gory film, but really well done. I mean, yes, it's got, you know, it's very independent, but I really like this movie a lot. And this one, I remember being pretty gross, and I remember watching it a long time ago, and it had a couple of 
pretty extreme gore scenes, unless I, I get this confused with a couple other ones, so I might be wrong, but it's the video dead. Now, I don't think this is out on DVD officially. I got this at, um, from, I think, Horror Find or Chiller, one, one of the conventions. They don't always sell bootleg horror movies at horror conventions anymore. There's been all these problems with it, so it's hard to find them at some of them. Some do, some don't. It all depends if they're going to sell them or not. But I guess it's from Freak Creepy Flicks, no, Crypt Flicks, so maybe they have a website if you want to get it. But some of them are in public domain, so that the public domain ones they can sell. This one had really extreme um, autopsy sequence, like an autopsy scene in these horror films. And they were called Aftermath, Genesis. I got this unknowing what this was and really liked them. It's a couple of short films, really well done short films. And I believe this one out of print and it's selling for like $50 online, but I think it's coming back out soon. And this movie I think is is a little bit gorier than the Friday the 13th movies. Friday the 13th movies are gory, but they're not, there are a lot of cutaways. If you notice, a lot of the times when someone's killed, it's not as extreme as some of these other movies I'm talking about. You don't see it as long, and it's, there's yet to be uncut DVDs of the Friday the 13th movies. If they do, they would make the top gory films. It's too bad that they've never done that, but it's the burning, and I think the sequences in this are really extreme. The, especially like the scene when those kids on the raft are getting killed and Jason Alexander is in this movie. The full head of hair and he was real skinny. It was pretty skinny. He was cool in this. I, I, It's like one of those movies you would never have thought he was in. A couple of people you wouldn't have thought are in this movie. And the Weinsteins actually produced this film. I'm sure they're not very proud of it nowadays because you know they do like arty things and but it's a good one. And this one I said because people, are gonna, if I don't say it, are going to say, why didn't you mention it? And it is gory, and it is gross, and the sequel is really gross. I didn't, I, the sequel made me kind of sick. I didn't, I didn't like it very much. I don't really like those violent toward women movies. That, I don't know, they're kind of, I don't know, I don't like watching that kind of stuff. But it's, um, the first Hostel I, I thought was pretty decent. Um, the second Hostel, I, I didn't care for that very much. It, I don't know. And I liked, I, I did like the Wiener Dog, you know, the, I always forget her name and always think Wiener Dog from, um, Welcome to the Dollhouse was in it. I was happy to see her and getting a, a decent role in a movie that a lot of people saw. This one, the director told me there's going to be a third, emailed me a while ago and said there's going to be a third one of them. I can't wait to see it. And it's, um, video violence. There's that one guy online who, um, has that character that, talks about those movies, I don't remember, I forget his name, but he puts down the movies, but he told me it's just a character, so like, if you see his review for Video Violence, I don't know if he did or didn't like it, he probably did like it, but I like this movie a lot, Video Violence, so, um, just give this one a chance, you can get this very cheap, it comes with one and two, they're very gory films, and it's about this town that, felt like, they they all they they don't like sex or anything in films, like they're going to the video store and they hold this this mom's writing this tape and says, does this movie contain any sex? And she's like, oh, I don't think so. And then they, the the clerk says, well, but it does contain a lot of violence. She's like, oh, that's fine. It's about this crazy town that makes like everyone that comes into the town they like lure them and film them and kill them and then they rent the tapes in the video store. It, it's great and it's video violence. And I love the the extremely cheesy synth music in these movies. It, I mean, it these are great. And and the director, be proud of these movies. It's great, and I cannot wait for the part, third part. I hope just use at least one sequence of cheesy '80s music. Don't if you don't want to use it the whole time, just use at least once. Maybe the theme. Um, and the next one is um, a John McBride film. I haven't talked about this one as much as Woodchipper because I prefer, I really like Woodchipper the best. And I've talked to him about that, and I th he said that Woodchipper is one of his favorites as well. But the Cannibal Campout is a very gory film, and that's his other film. He made this first. I like this as well. It's got some cool sequences in his music. I like a lot the um, like the music he made and the music that the composer made for this. But I really enjoyed, like, thought the gore was really well done in this, and the sequence when like John McBride's character is like 
being having intestines open and they they're really well done. And the next one is another one that's like not um blood kind of gory, or just like a, like disgusting kind of gore, like slime and stuff. And it's Slime City from Shako Rama and this is like an 80s film. I don't remember what year. No, 89. And this is a really well done movie and it was weird when I was at the convention, I it was on this table with a video playing and they were playing um selling this. And I didn't realize that the people who were selling it were like everyone who was in the movie. See, I hadn't seen it yet. So they were like, would you like this signed? And I was like, oh, no, thanks. And they looked real disappointed. And then I, then I watched this later and was like, wait a minute. They were the people in the movie. I, I've had that happen to me a couple times. Like I've met people, that a lot of people that have been in things and I don't even realize who they are. Like I met the guy from um, the Clark and Michael show at Comic-Con which he was doing this interview, and I talked to him, and I didn't even know who the hell he was. And then I looked later and figured out who he was, and he was on that Clark and Michael, and that show Greek, which I've never seen. I don't even I don't even know what it's about. And this one, I, I you cannot go without saying, I can't show the cover inside because it's too much, too extreme, and there's some brief nudity on it. But um, it's Cannibal Holocaust. And people have asked me about this film a lot. This is a movie I get a lot of comments. People saying, what do you think of this movie? I, I like this movie. It's I don't like the animals, toward like the, the sequences when the animals are killed. Those are the sequences that everyone talks about, like when the turtle's killed. But when you think about it, like if you were out in the jungle, you had no food, you'd have to eat these animals. But... It's just it's not good to some of you want to see, but there's an option on this way to to block out those sequences if you don't want to watch them. But don't not watch the movie just for that because it's actually a really well done movie and the score to the movie is amazing. Same with the cinematography for this and it's the movies that's inspired things like Blair Witch and Cloverfield and all that came from this movie. And we're just about done. The um I'll see. Next one is a movie that was really disgusting. After I watched it, I was like real sick to my stomach because it had these bugs and it was just gross. And I'm sure some people have seen it. And it's called The Vineyard. Ugh. I don't even like discussing it. It's a movie I don't think I'll ever watch this again. It was not a bad movie, but it was just like so gross. Ah, shit. And the next one is... um. Cannibal Ferox was another one of the cannibal films. And this one was as gory as Cannibal Holocaust. I didn't like it as much. There's some like extreme sequences in this, but I'd recommend it. I can't show that inside. A lot of these have nudity inside, so you can't show them. But um and the next one, this is the final one, is Street Trash, which is another really cool one with really cool gore sequences of like people melting and the guy melting into this toilet. It's another um it's a 1987 film. The guy who did this did a couple other things, I believe. So, um, I hope you guys like this video of me talking about my favorite gory, grossed-out films. I'll probably do a second volume of this at some point. But um, I hope you all like this, and thanks for everyone for subscribing. And thanks to all the people who have like lately been mentioning me in your videos. I noticed some guy who was on G4 doing DVD talk. He put a link to one of my videos on his blog and said, like, if I ever get fired or something, I want this guy to replace me. And, you know, I, I was, uh, thanks for saying that. I'm glad you like my stuff. And, and, um, thanks for the guys at Dead Pit for the two little mentions in your videos as well. And for everyone else who talks about me. So thanks a lot for everyone for subscribing and for watching these videos and for sharing them. So, um, I hope you like the video. Okay.